And then do you, your title, do you want to be artisanal distillery manager at Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, or is there a different title you want to go by? Or? Master Artisanal Distillery. Master Artisanal Distillery, okay. Is it Master Artisanal or Artisanal Master? <laughs> the one I saw yesterday was Master Artisanal Distillery. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. We'll see what she says next week, right? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> it's not even <laughs> it, it, Next week, I'll be my pink sheet after today. <laughs> well, we did it. We're here. It's our 100th episode, the big one zero zero. I'm honestly amazed that we've made it this far. I mean, this is this is a, a monumental achievement, not only just for Ryan and myself, but as well as for all the Bourbon Pursuit listeners out there. I can't say thank you enough for helping support the show and getting it to where we are today. I remember back probably it was like the 15th or 20th episode, and that was when we kind of took our first hiatus, and people were saying, well, when's the next podcast? And that's when we realized that People like listening to this. This is a great podcast, and I think what we're doing is completely unique to, to what's been out there before. And I'm, we're just so happy that so many people find it enjoyable. You know, with that, we really need you to push out those iTunes reviews. You know, putting out an iTunes review does a few different things. One, it helps make us more noticeable on iTunes. So when people want to search for bourbon, bourbon pursuits always the number one result that comes up. You know, with that, we can continue to keep calling ourselves the official podcast of bourbon as well. It's a big morale factor when Ryan and I, we read these reviews, um, you know, whether they're positive or negative, we take that feedback very seriously and we can't thank you all enough for actually giving the constructive criticism uh, that we need to make this the best possible show out there. Um, you know, with that, we also want to be able to push more information. You know, we've got to grow our listener base a little bit more. So making those iTunes reviews and putting them out there is a really a big help in driving and pushing the show to uh, the best possible it can be. At the same time, you know, we need your help too to help spread the word. If you are uh, taking a road trip this summer with some friends or you got a friend that's taking a road trip or you've got uh, friends that are have long commutes every single day and they need a, a way to kill the time, tell us to download the podcast. Say, say Bourbon Pursuit's a great way to start getting into bourbon, start learning about it, learning about the history. And, uh, and so hopefully they can give you um, a little bit more educated, especially when they come over and they try to steal your Henry McKenna or anything like that. We had somebody that, that commented on our Facebook this past week, and they were asking if we were going to talk about what had happened in the secondary market. Uh, if you've been hiding at the rock, there was a huge reveal and yes, we will be talking about it. So please, uh, subscribe and uh, to iTunes first of all but also if you want to be a part of it we're going to be discussing on the next bourbon community roundtable which will be on Tuesday uh, the 27th uh, at nine o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Central Time I'm sorry Eastern Time and when we do this uh, of course it's all on YouTube live uh, we're gonna put all the links out there on social media for Facebook Twitter and Instagram make sure you follow all the guys Blake from Bourboner he'll probably put on the Bourboner Facebook group uh, guys from Breaking Bourbon, uh, as well as Brian from Sippin' Corn and Carrie from Suburbia. It's going to be a really lively discussion because if you hadn't paid attention, this is kind of like a big deal of what's going to be happening with uh, a lot of the secondary bourbon markets going forward. Uh, so last, the last note here is that this week's guest is Charlie Downs. And I got to just say that Heaven Hill is a great friend of the show. And Please show your support by going and liking their Facebook pages at the Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, uh, as well as next time you're in Louisville, go ahead and go check out the Evans Williams Bourbon Experience. I can guarantee you that it's going to be a tour that you've never had before because it's unlike anything else in the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. And as, at the same exact time, go and knock on the glass window and tell Charlie, say, hey, we listened to your story on Bourbon Pursuit. And uh, and so hopefully he'll he'll give you a nice handshake in return. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you again and enjoy this 100th episode. Welcome back to the episode of the Bourbon Pursuit Podcast, the official podcast of bourbon. Today we are downtown in Louisville at probably one of the one of the coolest visitor attractions that you're going to see in downtown. But Ryan's not with me today, but instead I have a guest stand in co-host. So today we have Shannon Follett, right? Did I say it correctly? Good, good. All right. So Shannon, just go ahead and introduce people to the show of, you know, who you are, uh, how you got into bourbon, kind of, you know, 
what you do now with bourbon, all that kind of cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a local Kentuckian. I've been in the tourism for about four years in a couple different facets. I was with Mint Julep Tours for about three years, doing some great things. I uh, worked at uh, the Bullet uh, Visitor Experience for about six months and a couple other stints with them um, in the bourbon world. And then uh, most recently, I've been a, a year with the uh, Bourbon Mafia. So I'm a, oh. I'm a mafietta, one of the few women. So oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked to uh, Brian. Ryan Gelfa, who's in the mafia before. And I mean, it's a really kind of a cool experience just because you get to go and pick your own barrels and you get to be part of this kind of like tight knit club. So it is a pretty cool thing, right? Oh yeah. They're, they're just a wonderful group of individuals. They love to share and talk about bourbon and it's not some crazy elite, you know, who's who it's very, just, it's very family like. So I've, I've really enjoyed those, those people. Well, that's awesome. So we're glad you can actually make it on the show today because it was funny that, uh, you know, we've had guest stand-ins before and thank you to everybody that has been a guest stand-in, which was Matt Evans and Lyndon Ferguson before. And I know Shannon, she's been itching to come on. So mm-hmm. hopefully this is her time to shine and ask some good questions and, and really put our guests on the spot today. Thanks. So let's, let's go ahead and introduce our guest. So today we have Charlie Downs. Charlie is the master artisanal distiller, uh, and at Evan Williams bourbon experience for Heaven Hill brands in downtown Louisville. So Charlie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. So before we dive into it, I think we need to give people uh, an idea to know more about you. And as most people know that my wife also works at Heaven Hill and I was at the company Christmas party this year and you were honored because you have now spent 40 years at Heaven Hill. Uh, well, we can back up. It's 41 now. 41 now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, as we get older, you know, time flies by. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's 41 now. 41 great years. So I just talk a little bit about like... Uh, you know, like, how did you kind of like carve your path through here and, and, you know, what brought you to Heaven Hill in the very beginning? Well, you know, it's just like, you know, we can go back 41 years, you know, everybody's looking for a job, you know, you're out of school, you need a little money, you know, your parents say, you know, go. So here we go. So you have to have go out and get a job. So I did, I applied to Heaven Hill and was accepted there, you know, and back then, you know, the, or still is, you know, Heaven Hill was a unionized company. And uh, I, I started out working with the union and, you know, worked, I worked there for, for uh, about, 59 days and they laid me off oh really so, so you know i said here goes my career at heaven hill you know 59 <laughs> days i'm gone so anyway but I, I was called back and uh i started working in the steering department then and been there ever since I enjoyed every minute of it so you would you come in originally for under the union side well i, I had worked in the uh, first i started out in a bottling facility okay uh, uh, loading uh track and trailers out with loaded case goods and from there i uh, i had a bid on a job you know in order to, you know, most time you get a job at Heaven Hill, some of the jobs when they come vacant when somebody leaves or retires or moves on, you have to bid on it. So, you know, seniority uh, takes a lot of steps into it. So uh, I had a, uh, signed a job. You know, I'd only been there, you know, six months. And, and some of the older gentlemen said, well, you won't get this job because, you know, you're too young on a senior list. But, though, I, apply, I, I signed it, and, you know, two guys in front of me gave it up, and that's how I started my distillery career. I started at the distillery working in the fermenting room. And from there on, it's, it's all history. And so I guess I kind of talk about some more of those uh, positions that you kind of took to, to kind of carve your path here, right? Well, because it's... Uh, yeah, you know, it, uh, you know, so back then at Heaven Hill, you know, there was, there was a lot of... The old plant that the, in Barstown, there was a lot of hands-on activity. I mean, you had to do a lot of... Not like it is now where, you know, you got a lot of technology that, that helps you operate a story. Back then, we did a lot of stuff hands-on. So there was a lot of jobs, you know, assistant, assistance to you know, other people. So I started out, you know, in, in the affirmative room, and I, I have done every job in a story uh, from then on. Every one, you know, from... I you know, affirmative room, you know, mash tub, you know, running, operating stills, Operating dry house, uh, a boiler room, everything. So it's a, and, and you know that kind of that kind kind of taught me the you know the ways of how Heaven Hill did things. Mm-hmm. So who are the, some of those people that that gave you your break, right? Well, you know, I I credit. I'll go always back to you know I to give you a little history. I'm I'm probably one of, one of two people in our company that has worked with all three master distillers before me, then also three generations of our owners. You know, it goes back to those. So, so th- I credit those people that you know give me a, giving me a chance, but especially Parker Bean. Uh, you know, he was he was a great man, and you know, and I the, the story I tell today, only thing I can feel is that only thing I, thing that I can see is they they feel sorry for me. And 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 taught me a lot of things without without me realizing it. And 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 I, as the way I look back now on it, you know, that it, it I see that they did, you know. Just, uh, they took me under the wing and and taught me a lot of stuff that uh, that you ordinary wouldn't you know 
wouldn't divulge in you know in an employee mm-hmm. right uh, you know you need our you know company but I, I did I did turn into management in 1983 so after that you know they uh, they they took me under wing and, and taught me a lot of stuff and a lot of the old ways how to do things how to carry on a tradition here at Heaven Hill that we're still doing today I, I guess a, a good question since uh, would you consider Parker one of your your mentors then yeah. as you went through this and and as as most people know Parker passed away this past year and yes. I guess kind of kind of talk about did you have a favorite memory or is there a certain lesson that he taught you that you know you've kind of always honed or took to heart or anything like that well you know uh, Parker a great man he was you know he also you know he learned from his father also Mr. Earl and you know Mr. Earl you know he always you know drove it into his strap you know you always want to do the best you can because you're, you're producing a product that you know for the consumer you're producing, producing a product that you know that you want to be proud of so you know Mr. Earl told you know Parker then Parker you know uh, drove it into me you know consistency you know make a product that uh, that that that's the same day in and day out. You know, don't change anything, because you know, you you know, you can make different types of whiskeys, American whiskeys, as we do. But you do, you will make those the same way every day, day in and out, so the consumer can have a product they can rely on. That's the same as they buy a bottle this week. Next year, they can go buy a bottle, and it's going to be the same what they're what they're expecting to buy. So, you know, I, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was saying, you know, Parker. You know, his memories of me. You know, he. Once we, once I became a management, you know, uh, Parker's wife and my wife, and we all were friends, you know, and, and he would, he would invite, you know, us over to his house, drink, eat, you know, and just enjoy the afternoon, you know, and you don't see that in, in very much, much management, you know, when people, you know, here you are, you're, you know, low on a totem pole, you know, you think here's, mm-hmm. here's, you know, they're, they're, they're God, you know, not God, but you know, they're, oh, they're, now, they're nowadays, they're, nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, you yes. don't, you know, you don't, you don't expect to associate with, with them when you're low man on a totem pole right. but Parker would take he, that's the kind of guy he was his family too they would take you under their wing and just just welcome you in mm-hmm. you know and that's 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 what I remember about Parker and his dad also I, I think that also just kind of speaks to the Heaven Hill family and the brand in itself I mean you know Max drives a you know he doesn't he doesn't drive a uh, you know, nice Corvette or anything like that, right? I think he still has like a beat up Cadillac or something, right? I mean, that's just kind of what the the owners of Heaven Hill actually drive. Yeah, he does. Max, you know, he's he's you know, Max drives from Louisville every day all the way to Barstown. You know, seven days a week. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the thing about their family. You know, they're they you know they they're not five days a week and go home. They are every minute every day working, doing something for the company and and their, their employees. You know, uh, that's what I recognized about this company years ago. You know, we we walk down the hallway and pass Max or any of the brothers, you know, that were still living. Harry, and they would smack you on the back and say, how you doing today, Charlie? You know, it, and it surprised you. Well, they know my name. <laughs> but that's that's the kind of family and that's the kind of business we are. You know, they uh, they know just about everyone, in, you know, in, in our industry here and also that's working for them. And treat them as family, too, even though, you know, they're, you know, they're the owners. Yeah. You know. Right. So I guess talk a little bit about your job here then, right? I, we, we've talked about a little bit about you, um, you know, and kind of how you got into the, 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 the distilling business in itself. Um, now, I guess one thing I didn't ask was, I mean, your education and background, like in this, you know, when you when you bid for that distilling part, like, was it something that, like you said, like, oh, okay, like I, I could, I've been around it enough, like I can do this or any kind of formal education or just kind of like, you know, let's just build the plane while we fly. Uh, it's just like the last you said, build, you know, build a flame as we fly. Uh, you know, my prior education, you know, I'm just, you know, actually I'm, I'm, I'm a high school educator. I have no, I have no degree. Uh, this was all, you know, self-taught, self-learned, uh, taught through, you know, uh, apprenticeship, yeah. you know, that, and that's the thing, you know, and I, and I believe that's, that's what they, they saw in me years ago that, that, they, that I can understand, you know, uh, not only the concept, you know, and mechanically and everything like that, you know, self-taught. Uh, and, you know, I, I, if you give me a test to take on a paper, I cannot do it. But if you, <laughs> if you show me one time, then I can do it. Yeah. There you that's, go. that's the type of person I am, you know, uh, and you see a lot of people out in the industry like that. Mm. Uh, but, you know, that what they, what they, what they taught and, and how I conceived and learned it was, was carried on, you know, through up to today what I'm doing today. So talk about that phone call, right? Uh, there's a phone call that, that happens at one point, and they say, uh, "Charlie, we're gonna we're gonna we're opening this thing up downtown. Uh, we kind of want you to run it. Like, wh- how'd that go?" Well, you know, uh, 
it actually didn't go that way. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a phone call, but it, it, it was a person, person to person ask. But, uh, you know, we had worked on, you know, with uh, Harry Spear and, and the family uh, developing this, you know, this center here, you know, uh, trying to develop uh, the the process part that, that we do here, making our uh, whiskey, American whiskeys every day. So, you know, we I've been had working on it with them, you know, for a couple of years, you know, helping design this and that and, and answer some questions. So so I had I had actually went to the family herself and say, I would love to do this. You know, if you see fit that, that, that I'm capable of doing, I, I would love to do this. So, you know, it was, uh, we was in a meeting one day and, uh, and Harry said, uh, uh, would you like to do this job is available? I said, yes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, rest history. Oh, that's awesome. So let's let's talk about the facility a little bit, right? Uh, let's talk about your baby, uh, what you're here every single morning and doing, and uh, just a little bit more about uh, just in general, right? You know, you know, here, you know, we're our facility here is designed to make one barrel of bourbon or American whiskeys a day, and, and you know, we do that. As when we first started out, we were doing it seven days a week. Uh, we produced our first barrel of bourbon November 14, 2013, and as of, as of today, we're on barrel number 846. So you know we we've made you know five six different uh, types of American whiskeys here. Uh, they haven't been released yet. Uh, we're still you know looking at them and, and nurturing them and you know wash them as we would like one of our own children. Mm-hmm. You know and as as they mature, then we will try to release some of them to the public. You know as as become of age. But you know here here you know it's it's a <clears throat> everyday job. You know uh, we're operating uh, the distillery operates Tuesday through Saturday now, uh, and we start out about uh, six o'clock in the morning. Myself, I have uh, three other gentlemen. Uh, Jelly Fatchers, which is my assistant, he's been in Heaven Hill 35 years. Mm-hmm. And then I have a young gentleman James, named James Cox. He's our steering technician. He's been three years. Then also we have another young apprentice named uh, Will J. He's been on board for about a year. So, you know, we're taking these guys under our, under our wings and, and teaching them, you know, the process and how to make, a, you know, a great barrel of bourbon. And, and that's what we do. You know, we, it, it takes us, it takes about nine hours to make one barrel of, of bourbon here, or American whiskeys a day. Where our main plant, you know, the Bernheim plant makes uh, almost a thousand barrels a day. And here we're making one. And I keep telling them I'm going to catch up with them one day. But, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't, it might be kind of hard to do. It's like you might need some expansion. We might, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the, expa- the expansion, that's another thing. You know, we're, we are stuck with our footprint we have here. We're stuck, you know, we're, our building's only 27 foot wide, you know, and, and, and some places we're in five stories, but we are are we are stuck on room that's as far as we can go. Right. Mm-hmm. So I guess talk a little bit more about, you know, one barrel a day and like I guess what's the main difference between other than like a, a continuous column still, right? Like what right. what's the difference in the equipment that you would see here versus Bernheim? Well, you know, the equipment is a little bit different. The process is about the same. You know, uh, here at the Web Center we're using our we're using pot steels. Uh, and basically, that's about the only difference is between the, our, bur- our main facility, the main facility that we use column steels. Mm-hmm. We here we using our we have our mash tub where we cook our grains up to extract our starches. Uh, we have our fermenter tanks that we uh, that we put our fermenters you know put our our fermenter grain in and let it ferment there. Uh, but you know run it run it through the through the uh, pot steels, change it quite a bit. Uh, you know, here we're doing. You know, everything we do here is hands-on. That's where the that's where the term artisan comes from. You know, it's, it's a you know it's a, a craftsman that's doing things in small quantities by hand. Mm-hmm. So you know that's what we're doing here. You know, to produce our our bro whiskey. But the pot steels makes it totally different from a unique different taste than it is from the continuous steels. So you know we've seen that from the barrel one all the way through what we're doing now. Uh, but the other process, our other part of our process is the same, except we're on a smaller scale smaller scale that we're doing here uh and and we you know and we are as you know as it says our you know our our name says artisanal it we, we are doing it you know on, on a craftsman type basis hands-on uh we we do everything from you know from from our from our, our grains coming in to grinding our grain or to dumping our grains in our mash tub uh, firming, cooking, you know, everything, everything done by hand, you know, pumps, valves, everything is done by hand. We're, you know, we're some, some of the, the major series is a lot of automation, a lot of, you know, automatic valves and stuff cutting on. But here, here we do everything by hand. 
Now, do you feel like you're at an advantage or disadvantage because of it's being done by hand, or is it's like, well, I can, I like to make one barrel today, right? I'm not making thousands, so it's, it makes it a little bit easier. It makes it unique. It makes it unique. There you go. You know what we're doing here, you know, by hand is unique. You know, you you don't see that very often, much more. You you know, but it's it's, it's starting to make a comeback. You know, a lot of a lot of handmade products. Mm-hmm. People are want people are, the the consumers wanting to see that handmade. So you know. Like I said, there, there's a niche out there for for everybody, you know, that it would be your handmade cheese or handmade anything. You know, mm-hmm. people are looking for that and, and, and willing to uh, come from far away to, to get something like that. And here, you know, being handmade, uh, the way the process we do is, is totally different. You know, it, it surprised me the way, you know, the flavors and everything we're picking up now, you know, through our distilling process here. All right. So I guess uh, also talk about the, the facility a little bit because... I would think that you almost feel like a hamster in a cage, right? Because uh, as soon as you walk in and you take a you take a, a tour here, you're gonna walk by, and then all of a sudden, like the curtain opens, and then uh, then it's like, oh, there's there's Charlie, just you know checking <laughs> checking gauges and temperatures, and uh, you know taste and mash or whatever it is, right? Well, you know, you know the, the 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 whole you know the whole experience that you you uh, experience here, you know, from when you walk in the door till you walk out, you know, it's unique. You know, we. Uh, we're trying to give people the history on uh, who Mr. Evan Williams was. Uh, he, you know, it's it, not only you know it's one of our brands. He was he was an actual person. Mm. So we you know we wanted to educate the the public on who he was, who we are, and you know and then then to give them a little extra you know extra surprise. You know we do have an operating distillery here, and a lot of people probably a lot of people don't realize that because you know they're walking through the facility. You know they're looking at videos or the tour guides explain this to them. Then all of a sudden you know these blinds go up. And then you see, you know, you see, it's like, uh, you know, what's uh, some of the TV shows, you know, what's behind curtain one, two, or three? Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's Charlie and Joe. The big reveal. <laughs> big, you know, and, you know, when we're, when we're back there distilling, you know, those curtains go up, we have no idea they're going up. Mm-hmm. You know, here we are, you know, we could be back there turning a valve or anything like that, or, and then we could turn around, and all of a sudden people are looking at us, you know, we want to be friendly, wave at them, they wave back <laughs> sometimes. So, you know, it, it's not a hamster in a cage. Yeah. It's like being at the movies and, 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 and the, uh, and the show and the movies and the show starts. You know, the curtain goes up, and so here we are. You know, behind the curtain. But you know, it, it's it's nice. You know, you see. You know, we go out. We go out and talk to some of the, the tourists that come through, and uh, we we have a little uh, uh, procedure that we let them do every day. You know, we uh, we have, always have pull pull somebody out of one of our touring groups, or we have a lot of people to request to bung off our barrel, the barrel whiskey or American whiskey we make every day. They want to bung off our barrel, which means put the stopper in it and, and hammer it in with a hammer. And uh, we have we've had people from every walk of life coming to do it. We've had uh, 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 musicians. We have Earth, Wind, and Fire here. We've had Brad Paisley. Uh, we've had uh, the astronaut shuttles, the shuttle astronauts. Yeah, mm. come in really? and do it. Yeah, you know, and they drew they drew space shuttles on the barrels. You know, we've had you know we've had priests. We've had. A lot of military. We're, 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 we do a lot for the military. You know, we have a, uh, uh, a bourbon out now called American Hero Bottle that uh, is, has a picture and a story of, of, of someone who's been, been in the service. And so, you know, we have a lot of people request that they have, you know, a serviceman come in, a serviceman or woman come in and to bung off our barrels. We have a lot of anniversaries. A lot of people come back for their anniversaries every year that the, the request to have our barrel bung. We have a group that comes in every year for the uh, uh, Farm Machinery Show in February. And they, they have requested that they want to do it every year when they come back. We've had a wedding party come from the uh, Little Arts Center next door, request, or re- reserved to have their the barrel bung, and they walked over with their wedding gowns, tucked <laughs> party still on, bung their barrel sign, and went back to their wedding. So, you know, little things like that that, that help us to educate interact with with the public mm-hmm. it, you know it's a great thing you know that's that's part of when like i say when the wind shades go up then we go out there and, and talk to these people mm-hmm. but you know the to understand and to realize that <coughs> excuse me you're good that we're part of that we're part of this experience is 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 a is an experience and and i thank you to all to everyone mm-hmm. well it keeps you in business right Yes. Yeah. So that that's a positive, right? Mm-hmm. So um, feel free to interject with any questions. Yeah. Anytime you have something, just just go ahead and jump in. But um, I guess a, a <laughs> question I'll have for you is, um, you know, you said you you know you, you mess with a lot, or you talk to a lot of tourists, and 
what are some of those oddball questions that some of them ask, right? That you're just kind of like, well, that came out of left field or something like that. You know, they're, are they all oddball? I don't know. You know, you know, that, you know they're, they're interesting. Is there, is there a stupid question? I don't know. Maybe. But, you know, <laughs> Have is, we asked is, any? Is, is there a stupid answer? <laughs> you know, uh, but they're, you know, they're, the public is, the public is, 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 they're looking for answers for everything. It's something they don't know or something they don't quite understand. And when they come through here, you know, the first question is, you know, it can only be made in Kentucky. You know, no. Mm-hmm. It can, you know, United States. Uh, it has to be, you know, two years old, four years old. No, it does not. Mm-hmm. You know, it's questions like that, you know. And <coughs> I had a gentleman come, day, come through one day because, you know, the tour guide explains, you know, that, uh, you know, we pull, you know, 60 to 80 samples every day and we taste half that many to get our proof and, you know, uh, make adjustments in our steels to, to produce our best product. So one day I went out and was talk, talking to the, uh, tour, uh, the group, and this gentleman, he was kind of a... <coughs> excuse me. You're good. <coughs> Go ahead, drink some water. I'm going to have to. No, you're good. This is all the power of yeah. magical part of editing that we can mm-hmm. take care of, so you're good. This is why you said, so, don't do it live, right? Yeah, <laughs> so why well, I have... I, I've done it with uh, uh, Mike Beach. Oh, time, gotcha. So. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you know, this went out, and I went out and talked to the tour group. And I could see, I could tell this gentleman was, was he was itching, itching to ask me something. You know, he turned around. So, so he raised his hand. I said, yes, sir. And he said, can I ask you a personal question? Of course, you know, <laughs> run through my mind. Well, you know, what, what's this guy going to ask me? You know, so anyway, he said, he said, you know, the, the tour guy just said, it's, you know, that y'all taste, you know, you pull 60, 80 samples and you taste half that many. He said, does, does tasting that bourbon all day long like that, does it make your hair white? Of <laughs> course, you know, I'm white. He says, does it make your hair turn white? And this guy was, he's like an eight ball on, on his head. He, yeah. you know, he was kind of shiny on head. I said, yes, sir, and it makes your hair fall out too. Oh, no, <laughs> so, yeah, you so, must have you know, you know, I'm Enjoyable fine. questions like that. But we also have, you know, you know, we do allow anyone under 21 to do our tours Mm -hmm. you know they can't do any tasting like that but but you know some of the young some of the young children some of the young people ask questions you know interesting questions Mm -hmm. you know uh, about distilling the type of equipment we have why is it why is it this color what's what's it made of you know what your what your steels are made of you know uh and we see that we see this you know a lot of places we go a lot of a lot of the young people are interested in in what we do what we produce and maybe some you know someday that you know there'll be customers Mm. But you know that that's interesting to see how the, some of the young people you know interact and Age. questions they ask. You know we've had we've had people from, you know from every walk of life come through, and sometimes you know it's it's hard to understand some of the some of the non English speaking people. Mm-hmm. But you know we can still communicate with them. That's a the thing. You know they they still understand. Mm-hmm. In your experience, since you have, you know, years and kind of probably seen some trends even, you know, last five years and beyond, mm-hmm. have you seen a difference in consumers, as, you know, kind of touching on questions or their knowledge or any any difference between the yes, years? Yes, you know, now, now they, you know, they're wanting to know how it's made. You know, they're, they're inquisitive about, you know, the, the, the type of grains we use, where we get them from. Mm-hmm. You know, are they uh, non-GMO? You know that, that type of question. Are they non gmo Yeah, <laughs> can you answer that? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yeah, but you know they're, they're you know they're and the question you know, are are we going to produce anything organic? Mm-hmm. You know, you know some companies you know there there's some you know a lot of a lot of stuff now is, is organic. Mm-hmm. A lot of wine and, and, have gone that way. Right, and, mm-hmm. and and the consumer you know they're they're looking for things like that. Uh, and in the future we we will probably we will probably make something you know organic. I, I guess I guess educate me a little bit. Like, what would be the difference between organic uh versus like what's basically happening today like is, are just the grains just not organic enough i mean what what's what's in the process that's not making it uh, quote unquote organic well you know the organic you know they're they're not using any pesticides any any type of equipment treatment you know to to enhance you know to enhance you know the productivity mm-hmm. and and people you know people nowadays you hear about you know a lot a lot of of Pesticides, you know, insecticides being used on on a lot of lot of things, and and how it's grown, where it's mm-hmm. grown at. So people people are more getting interested in a lot of organic products. Uh, I think I read a comic once that said uh, when my grandparents used to go to the grocery store, there was no such thing as organic. It was just called going to the grocery store, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Well, you know that that's that's the way you know of the public now. People are wanting different types of products produced different types of ways. Mm-hmm. 
and you know and and if you do not get on the bandwagon for it then you know you're losing out you're losing out on 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 uh uh, sales one day or mm-hmm. something like this so so you know we're we're looking at it whatever the consumer is focused on it is you know and that, that's what we are you know we're a consumer friendly company you know we that's what we want we want to provide a product to the consumer mm-hmm. and 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 make and and hope they enjoy it and come back and see us again because we are providing something that they are really wanting mm-hmm. so when we think about the consumer side and want to give them what they want uh you know it seems like lately people are going crazy over like weeded mash bills and uh, just like barrel proofs and some kind of crazy cask finishes. But like, w- what is kind of like your thought of, of what you're doing here, of, of kind of what Parker told you of sticking tradition, sticking to consistency. And, and you know, you said before that you were trying a few different things here. Can you kind of dive into a little bit about what you are kind of messing with? Well, you know, we haven't released anything yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we still have to lift you, you know, leave you mm-hmm. to a question of what we're doing. And one day hope, you know, that, that I want this when they release it. You know, we have, we have done several different types of mash bills. Uh, we have done our know, regular rye uh, based bourbons. We have done a weeded bourbon. We have done a rye whiskey. Uh, and we have done a uh, uh, what we call a high rye bourbon. You know, there's no definition out there yet for high rye bourbons. But you know, you, you look at anything, you know, up in the 20% or 30 percentile range of using rye in a bourbon. In a bourbon. So you know, that's, that's what we classify what we're doing here, a high rye bourbon. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's turned out excellent so far. I uh, can't give you any mash bills yet or any mm-hmm. any, any percentages. I, until, I don't think that's until, even in Heaven Hills you know, category to be able to give me anything know, out. So. You know, until, until we release it, you know, it's still it's still questionable to the public what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but, you know, but, but those products that we have made here, they, they have been excellent products so far. And we are testing them every six months, see how they age. And, and uh, you know, like I say, we'll watch them until one day they, they become of age and we can put them in a bottle and release them to the public. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, typically four to six years, I mean, you're, you're pretty much, up, you've approached the fourth year, right? So yeah. I guess kind of like, what do you think is, I mean, has it matured to the way that you would want it to at this point? Or do you think it still needs a little bit more time in the wood? My now that's just my opinion, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know everybody has an you opinion. Are the, you are the, yeah, well, the yeah, master yeah, artisanal yeah, distiller yeah. here. Yeah, but though you know it's higher beings than me. Yeah, you know, but you know it's it's aging how you know as well as we want it to be. But you know I myself you know I love an older type whiskey or bourbon. Uh, but and I'm hoping you know uh just my opinion my suggestion i hope we don't release anything before six years myself Mm -hmm. you know we we want a product to release out there the public's going to come say oh this is this is it's going to be excellent but Mm -hmm. they want to you know i want i want a six-year-old bourbon or or american whiskey type and and whether it be cash strength or single barrel or you know small batch you know that's still yet to be decided Mm -hmm. but you know we hope that we can release something that they all will enjoy and want to come back and 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 buy us out Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah 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 so I guess another question, and this is kind of part of the whole movement and what's happening right now. Um, you chose to use the word artisanal instead of craft, right? So what is the, what is, is there a deeper meaning behind that? Uh, just because we're not creating a, a new brand or we're not doing whatever, is, is there a, a meaning behind choosing the word artisanal over it? Well, you know, arti- artisanal, you know, it, it, it is a craftsman. You know, that's the definition. You know, they, they, you are producing Whatever you're doing, whether it be in bourbons or or whatever whatever kind of craft you're in, you're producing you're using you're using quality in grains. Uh, you're doing it type of an old-fashioned way, hands-on operation to produce it. Uh, you could say you know we're we're type of a craft distiller. We 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 elect to call ourselves artisanal. Mm-hmm. You know, at what I tell people, what artisanal to me is the first word art. You know, I'm thinking of an artist. You know, artist has he he has his canvas, he has his paints, and he has something in his mind that he wants to produce. And that's the same way we are here at our, our artisanal distillery. Here, we started. We have our equipment, which is our canvas. We have our grains, which is same thing as his paints to the artist, and our brushes. You know, he has his brushes. We have our valves and everything. So we are. We know what we want to produce. We know what we want to make. Just like the artist, he has what his picture that he wants, or his background that he wants to put on his on his uh, his easel or his board there. Mm-hmm. So, as each step of the process we're doing here, 
the artist is doing too. He's taking his brush, making his strokes. We're cooking our grains. You know, at the fin- at the end, you know, he has his masterpiece. We have our masterpiece. Mm-hmm. He has his painting. We have our barrel. It's my favorite kind of art: edible art. That's what they say. Drinkable art. Drinkable art. I can't drink a Picasso. So, <laughs> so, 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 yeah, good. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Yeah. I'm I'm in um, interest. You know, with Heaven Hill having such a vast portfolio, which mm-hmm. just makes it so wonderful and you know, family owned. Um, along the way, has there any you know been any um, like specific challenges that you've been excited to to learn? I know you've said you've worked with, you know, whether it's bottle and bond stuff or high rise or anything that stands out that's been kind of a fun challenge for you. Here or in my whole life. Whatever you want to answer, <laughs> I guess. You know, the you know, the the thing is, you know, producing, you know, that years ago when we decided to do, you know, uh we did bourbons, our 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 uh, uh Burnham original, which is a full body wheat whiskey, you know. To be able to Devise a uh, a recipe for that, distill it, and see how it's going to turn out. Because you know nobody else had produced you know a uh, 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 high volume wheat whiskey like that, being fifty one percent wheat. So you know it's exciting to do something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's exciting you know here at the Edwin Experience you know, to produce a a high rye bourbon, which you know Ed, that that we had not produced before you know company wide to turn out. For to have it turn out like it has to get a great quality taste, and we know that 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 I know that one day then when it when it becomes available in the bottle, it's going to be a, a unique product. You know, that's with Heaven Hill, you know, diversified way we are. You know, years ago, uh, distilleries only had one or two labels. You know, that's all they had. You know, and and back then, you know, a lot of them, you know, some of them rotated the barrels in their warehouses to have a consistent product to be able to fill those one or two different. One or two different, three different labels that they had. Now you know they diversified out into single barrel, small batches, bottle and bonds products. Something that's available to to appeal to every person. You know their taste appeal. In the same way, you know, not only with 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 whiskeys or American whiskeys and bourbons. You know, vodkas. You know, we have line of vodkas. You know, Heaven Hill mm-hmm. Burnett's vodka, thirty seven flavors. You know, we're we're going to catch up. We're going to catch up with Baskin Robbins one day. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, to be able to. Have something available for every every person's taste out there in the world, you know, no matter who you are. And you know, that's that's the reason I think now companies now don't do not rotate their barrels in their warehouses because you know Heaven Hill has, has almost 1.3 million barrels of bourbon aging in their warehouses. And it, you know, that's costly to go out there and try to rotate, you know, barrels from first floor to seventh floor, fifth floor like that. And, you know, look look at the time consuming and the cost it would do. So I think that's from now reason companies have diversified out with so many different types of labels, proofs. Everything to to to. That's a good not theory. incur that not mm-hmm. incur that cost. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a good theory. It is. It is. That, that, of course, you know it's my theory. You know. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, everybody. Everybody has one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It could just be marketing being marketing. It could be a few different things, right? Mm-hmm. But that's a good theory. But as yeah, well. but no, it, and like I say, it's something available to every everybody's tastes out there, and and also you know their their pocketbook too. Mm-hmm. So. so I guess talk a little bit more about the so you know you you have the ability to to experiment to a degree, right? Yes. Um, now. You know, you said you've done a, a few different mash bills. You've done a high rye. You've done wheat. You've probably just done regular, uh, you know, rye based mash bill. Yes. Um, at what point? I mean, have you ever experimented with something and been like, "Well, this is this was a mistake, right?" Mm-hmm. Or or has it been like, "Well, we've we've, we've we're shooting a we're you know we're batting a thousand right now, right?" Uh oh, <laughs> there we go. They're stumping the chump here. No, 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 no. <laughs> there, you know, we can knock on wood. Or you know, we have in my time here at Heaven Hill, we have never made a mistake mm-hmm. on on a product, you know, because, you know, with all the expertise through the years with Parker, Merle, and also Craig Mean, uh, you know, before we decide to do something, it's thought out, you know, we have, we have asked questions of other distillers, you know, that's, that's the thing about, you know, the, the distilling industry, we are, we are all friends, every one of us, all the distillers, you know, they get together and drink, you know, drink each other's bourbon, you know, it's all free. They bring it, you know, it's all free. So, so, you know, we get together, you know, and, and we've exchanged ideas. We've exchanged, you know, have you had this problem with, with certain types of grains or how you cook it or how you mix them together? Uh, different things like, so, so you, you, you can understand some of the taste profiles of, of different grains and stuff cooked together. So, you know, it, to make a, uh, 
product that you would have to be would not be very proud of, whatever. You know, it, it's not probably almost non existing. Now, don't say we we now we have an experiment with different things, mm-hmm. uh, and the taste profiles of those have not turned out what we expect expected. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's very seldom you see something like it. But like I say, every every distillery has experimental products they use. But being here at the Mooksburg experience, you know, being such a on a small scale that I can do, I, I can experiment more with that types of of experimentation if I want to do it. But I haven't done it yet. You know, we're sticking you know to our basic roots. You know, uh, producing products that you know that we know the consumer want. But who's not to say one day we might make something that's that's unusual that nobody else has made. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, but you only you only have so many types of grains and stuff that you can mix together that that will produce a unique taste mm-hmm. and that then will age barrel you know age in a barrel correctly oh yeah because i haven't seen anybody try quinoa yet right so oh, there's no, all yeah. well you know not yet <laughs> but you know there there's a lot of craft distillers out there now that, that are experimenting with a lot of making a lot of unusual products mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. different type of corn different or... types of corn you know we we have done we uh we did a little a uh, couple years ago we did a what we call a bourbon affair which is happening this week yeah uh we had two groups come in and uh we let them actually make a, a mash bill for us recipe mm-hmm. you know they got to come in we 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 gave them several different types of grain to choose from uh and you know to be bourbon if they, if they wanted a bourbon or a whiskey so they they got to they got to decide you know from yellow corn or white corn i'm gonna i'm gonna go on a limb and just say they they chose bourbon every single time over whiskey <laughs> uh they did yeah <laughs> okay. they did just but, guess. but uh you know one group used some uh percentage of so much percentage of white corn mixed mm-hmm. with the yellow corn so, which was unique, you know, we let we let them uh, choose the the proof that it was distilled at, the proof that it went to barrel, went in the barrel at, uh, and the type of barrel. We let them use, you know, choose the type of barrel. Of course, you know, they they this group about there's about about thirty people, and we divide them into certain, you know, like ten diff, three different groups of ten people, each, and those groups came up with a kind of recipe they wanted, and then at the end. Everybody got to vote on which recipe they want, and and we are inviting them back ever every year now or every six months to test or to taste their product and see how it's finishing up. And we're gonna let them let them choose, uh, you know, whether it's gonna be a four year old, five year old, six year old. Yeah, and this is part of the Heaven Hills Build a Barrel Workshop. Probably, That's yes. what part it was. I, I guess you know. I, I guess for me, educate me because when I when you talk about the difference of you know half white corn, half yellow corn, like. What's the difference? Like at the, at the end of the day, like is there really that big of a flavor difference? Yeah, that you know, the come white, off of there, especially when you boil it down. You know, white corn has a lot more starch and everything in it, so you're gonna be a little sweeter. So you know, you do you do have that type of different flavors in it from the, from the regular yellow corn. So that's gonna make a little difference. And and you know the the, the amount of amount of rye we use in you know we let, we don't use rye wheat if they wanted to, you know wheat bourbon or rye bourbon. So amount of the percentage of rye in it, and also the percentage of malt. You know, all that will change the flavors of, of, of your product and of the grains you use in it. Gotcha. That's that's interesting to me because, I, like I said, when you said, like, white corn, yellow corn, mm-hmm. bloody butchered corn, like, all these things, like, I'm just like, well, what's the difference? Like, it's just corn. Like, mm-hmm. boil it down, right? But you know, I, I had no idea. You know, some some of the small craft cereal I've seen before, that they're using different, you know, they're using blue corn, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, Indian corn. I mean, you know, do you really think that gives anybody a, a competitive advantage? Do you think... I mean, at this point, you know, it's it's craft, and so they've got to they've got to test and they've got to wait, right? So they, do you think it's a, right? You know, it's, it's it, a gamble. It could be, you know, but but it, it appeals to someone out there in the public. It appeals to them, mm-hmm. you know, whether they use you know Indian type corn, or you know blue corn. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they they they're now they're making you know uh, uh, chips out of blue corn. Mm-hmm. So you know, if you ever tried that, you've seen them at Costco. Yeah, I've you know, <laughs> it's kind of unique seeing the blue color there. Of course, you know, our whiskey's doesn't come out blue. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> that'd be so, weird. You know, so you know, it's. Uh, I was gonna I say, it, it, you know, there's always there's always talk like bottle and bond, like you can't add artificial colors right, and flavors. Right. But I was like, I wonder if a darker corn would make it actually darker. <laughs> no, no, no. Of course, you know, when you when you distill, you know, your product when you distill it, right. it's, 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 it's always clear. clear. It's always yeah. clear. So, mm-hmm. but it, you know, some people might think of that. You know, using blue corn with well, is is the whiskey gonna be blue? Mm-hmm. But you know, it, it's going to be a unique flavor. So you know, I hope that uh, what they produce is is what yeah. they're expecting out out of you know the, their taste profile that they want out of this type mm-hmm. of grains. If it was blue corn and made blue whiskey, I'd figure like it'd be like a Walter White <laughs> scenario where you've got like you know you've got the whole underground whole ring. Of food, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> any any of those stand out that some of the folks did for the build a barrel? Like that you're like, oh okay, that's something different. Are you kind of the group gravitated towards in the process? 
what we what their comeback intention or what they started with. Uh, either way. Well, you know the. It, it's it kind of surprised me. You know when the first group wanted to do some white corn. Mm-hmm. You know, and and the second group, they want they wanted to grab it, They wanted to uh, go towards more of a heavy a heavy rye type bourbon. So you know that that's the thing. You know the you're seeing now some of the public now that's just tasting this tasting whiskeys and bourbons their their taste profile has kind of changed up a lot of people are recognizing rye bourbons now mm-hmm. you know that 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 is a, a growing trend rye bourbons so a lot of people are seeing that and, and you know and a lot of the mixologists out there now are using rye bourbons in it but you know the 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 two type of groups that we had in, in the Bilderberg program was totally different i mean you know and and, and I didn't see anything on in in age profile. You know, they were they were they you mm-hmm. know they were from you know from cool. seventy on down to you know being you know, above twenty one. So that that didn't didn't reflect whatever it changed. But it surprised me that that one group wanted to do do a, a type of corn, another group wanted to do a uh, heavier rye, mm-hmm. and and we gave we gave them both the same parameters to pick from. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about you when you when you just drink bourbon on the regular here right so you you uh you get to drink it fresh from the still every single day right you're yes. talking 120 140 100 anywhere from 160 down all right so yeah so you're up there now when you're when you're actually sitting on your you know in your living room or on your front porch or whatever it is are you a are you a barrel proof guy are you uh somebody who likes to have a you know bottle to bond 100 proof 90 proof like where, where's your where's your flavor profile take I'm, you? I, I'm an old person i, I love aged bourbon Mm. Uh, you know, any anything. My ch- my my choice would be you know an eighteen, twenty, twenty one, oh, twenty two. Yeah. You know, a lot of people. You know, they they're questionable about some of the characteristics that you pick up an older bourbon. You know, some of the wood flavors and stuff like that. But I love it. Single barrels. You know, any of our single barrels uh, mm. from uh, uh, you know Ed Williams single barrel, Henry McKenna single barrel. Uh, those types of bourbons, but but myself, I prefer an, an older bourbon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, oh, I, hey, I'll drink all of ours. <laughs> yeah, you know, of course you, you will. Know, uh, of course, you know, uh, my wife's also in the industry too. She's mm-hmm. in the bourbon industry, so what she do? So she's the HR manager for Wild Turkey. Oh, okay. Hey. Yeah, you know, of course, you know. Well, she, you know, she used to be the HR manager for Jim Beam. Mm-hmm. She was the HR manager for Barton's. So now she's the HR manager for a while, Turkey. So, like so she's running out of places to move to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be great. You know, it, you know, keeps keeps us in supply of different types of bourbons and whiskeys at the house. That's you know? true. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing. You know, so my friends come over, or whatever. We we host something. You know, and we're in a kind of argument. Who? What kind of? Who's bourbon are they going to drink tonight? <laughs> you know, whatever. So, but but no, no we good we, problem to have. You know, well, that's the same thing I was saying about earlier about about the, you know all the master distillers or anybody in the industry. We get together, we drink each other's bourbons. You know. Everybody, everybody makes good bourbon, great bourbons. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know we'll say ours is better, mm-hmm. but just like anybody else. Mm-hmm. But you know myself, you know when I'm out, I, I love uh, the cat strength bourbons, high proof bourbons. Appeal to some people that doesn't appeal to me. You know, I, I want I want something that I can actually you know put a uh, uh, ice cube in and let it sit there. You know, the higher proof bourbons, you know, the 130s, 140s, you know. Uh, Hazmats. Uh, ha- Hazmats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, as, uh, for my particular taste, you know, they're they're a little bit too high for me. But you know, anywhere from a hundred up to a hundred and fifteen, twenty. You know, once you put an ice cube in it, let it relax, breathe. You cannot ask for a better product. Sweet spot. And and you know, and not to say that that you know, sometimes when I'm out talking, you know, people ask, you know, how do I drink bourbon? Like you just asked now. And I, you know, I ask them how they'll drink their bourbon. You know, they'll, they'll hesitate because they might ask, add Diet Coke, you know, <laughs> mellow yellow, mellow yellow. You know, <laughs> you know and okay. and that's not wrong. You know, we tell people, you enjoy the bourbon the way you enjoy it. Don't let somebody tell you how you should drink it. Mm-hmm. You enjoy it the way you do. And and you know, another thing you say, you know, I ask them what whose brand they drink. Their heads and tell me too. I said it it does it it does matter, but it doesn't really because as long as you enjoy bourbon and drink bourbon, that's fine. If you get a chance to enjoy ours, please do. Mm-hmm. But you know, don't don't let anybody tell you not what to drink, how to drink it. You drink it and enjoy it every how you like it. Right. The wise and that's, and that's what I part. and that's what I do. You know, uh, I may every once in a while. It all depends what I'm doing. You know, if I'm sitting on the porch, you know, I'm, I'll drink some. You know, 
uh, some bourbon either, just like you know, little little ice cube in it. But if I'm if I'm going to be doing something all day, which involves you know, like like we go uh, uh, in my off time, which I have a little bit of. You know, <laughs> we uh, we sounds do like on Sundays <laughs> and Mondays. <laughs> yeah. You know, we we do a lot of outdoor activity. We camp. Uh, we cool. do uh, uh, side by side riding. You know, ATV riding, hmm. uh, which I don't drive. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there where I socialize, I may, I may add a drop of some kind of soda or something mm-hmm. to it, club soda, or you know, or some uh, Canada Dry. Mm-hmm. But it has to be a diet. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I have to watch my figure. Oh, we all, <laughs> you, know, you know, we all do. Well, so, it's summer. But, you know, yeah, but, you know, like season. I say, you know, people say, well, he mixing, he's mixing it. That's how I prefer it at th- different time. types. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, at diff- different times. And, you know, it's to say, don't let anybody tell you when, how, or how you shouldn't drink it. Mm-hmm. I'm with you on that because I see people all the time, whether on forums or Facebook friends or something, and they're sitting there drinking out of a Glen Karen in the beach, and I'm just like, how are you doing this right <laughs> yeah, now? That's, yeah. That sounds it's way too fancy. Oh, well, <laughs> it sounds horrible sitting there yeah. drinking, you know, warm bourbon on a hot day. Like, yeah, yeah you got to chill it down or something for me. That's, yeah. that's the only way I could take it. Chill down. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, no, no, hey. no I, believe me, I, I drink it. I drink a neat as, as often as I can. I'm just saying a 90, 99 degree day in the middle of July out on the beach. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to sit there and put a nice cube or two in. You wouldn't turn it down, though, would you? Oh, no. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, you know, we have to check and see, you know. <laughs> we don't you turn a good bourbon. Yeah, whoever said uh, the best bourbon's a free bourbon, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to that. But, you know, with, with Heaven Hill Fires, you were uh, at the company. I was just always curious, yeah. you know, you always remember, like, where you were, what happened, you know, I was just kind of curious. If oh, you were a, to, a well, question. I didn't know if that was okay to ask, so, you know. The day of the fire, okay, you know, uh, we were normal operations, Siri, and, you know, we uh, we carried walkie talkies with us, myself and Craig. It was a beautiful day, wasn't it? Like a, no, 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 oh, no, we had some stormy? severe storms, oh, okay. yes, yeah. Totally. You know, we had, we had, we had 67 mile, 60 to 70 mile an hour oh. winds and, and a lightning storm, you know, in the area. Is what did So, so they, you know, Craig and I was down, down to the uh, uh, main distillery, which is down below the hill, you know, we're, we're okay. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we were there and we got a call that, that one of the warehouses on fire. So Craig and I. Because you're on site. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Craig and I had drove up to the hill, to, up the Top hill, the hill. Mm-hmm. Where, where the warehouse on fire. So when he and I were talking, you know, they were they calling at you know, fire department, so I didn't know what was going to happen. So uh, Craig and I was talking, and Craig said, I'll stay here, you going back down to the distillery and start the process of shutting everything down because we don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, by the time I, I got down to, to below the hill to the and, and communicate to our employees what was going on, and we we're gonna shut all the process down and everything. So by the time that happened, we you know, we was inside, we wouldn't see what was happening outside. So by the time we shut everything down, come out to our uh, front of our distillery, mm-hmm. our our interest to our distillery was up on a second level, so we had to go up a set of stairs. So we walked out this door and the whiskey was running in our front gate okay. on fire. Oh, we, so we we couldn't get out there. You know, you, you couldn't see the flames because it was burning so clear. You could just see the heat rising. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. the alcohol, the whisk, burning whiskey was running down, running down uh, Highway 49 into our making a left turn into our front gate. So we we couldn't we couldn't go out that way. So uh, all of our employees went out went out the back, and there was a creek that ran around behind the distillery. How many employees are? Uh, we had probably probably ten. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's at the distillery, at, right? You know, so we had probably a ten, and and some of them went, when we went back there. Some of them went to the left, went up the hill towards the bottling house. Then some of us stayed down at, at the, on the other side of the creek where the distillery was. Uh, so you know, then it was just you know just a heavy turn loose. You know, other other distilleries, other warehouses caught fire and more alcohol running down. So uh, my wife was actually she was working at Jim Beam at the time. She was actually. Flying back from Deer, uh, uh, Dearborn, uh, Chicago, Chicago. Mm-hmm. she was on a plane sitting next to Denny, Denny Crum. What? Oh yeah. Yeah, and they and they had come on. The pilot had come on and said there was a major fire. Heaven Hill was on fire. Oh no. Of course, you know, they didn't have any cell phones back then. I didn't. Well, I wouldn't care a cell phone. So she didn't know what my status was. Mm. So finally, about uh, of course, the fire started at two forty or two something like two in the afternoon. So finally at nine o'clock at night I had got a hold of her. Because I was I was cut off. I was on the other side below the fire and uh, I was staying there, you know, employees for company, everything like that. And she, I did not get a hold until nine o'clock at night, told her that I was still 
you're okay. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Sick. But you know, it was it was you know, if you ever seen some of the pictures, look like a worn, you know, strewn area. It was it was devastated. You know, it was bad. Mm -hmm. And then you know, then the next morning, you know, uh, we all came back and 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 of course, you know, mud was deep, debris and everything was you know was a foot two foot deep in our around our distillery. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had our we still had uh, fire fires going on. I have a word, and the very top of our distillery, which was on the fifth floor, was our cooling box that we held our jug yeast in, our family yeast. Mm. Even though electricity was cut off, that floor what did not sustain very much fan, uh, fire damage. So we, we went and rented a cherry picker, and went up and got our our family yeast out and mm -hmm. took it and put it in an undisclosed location to protect it. And we so that we still be able to carry on the, the strain of yeast wow. that we had. So there's always that question of if your house is on fire, what's the one thing you grab? <laughs> jug and yeast. And it's a jug <laughs> yeast. A jug yeast. A jug yeast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Thanks for sharing. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. but you know, the, you know, the thing Thank about you. having you know, no, nobody lost their job. You know, very next morning, everybody was absorbed into the bottom facility of the warehouse. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the thing about you know, I was telling you earlier about our industry. We had several phone calls the next morning from other distilleries wanting to you know how can they help us? What can That's they do awesome. for us? Can they sell us aged bourbon that they thought that we thought we lost in our warehouses? Can they produce bourbon for us? Mm -hmm. And we actually we contracted with Jim Bean the very next day to make whiskeys for us using our recipe and our yeast. Mm -hmm. Even though Jim Beam's yeast was you know, some of the same strain that we had, you know, it had been tweaked by Mr. Earl Bean, mm -hmm. Parker's dad, and it and so we made they made our, our whiskey's for us using our recipe and our yeast drink. Mm -hmm. That's what's and so special about the industry. Like, yeah. not, I don't know how others yeah. might. Can't you, see, can't you see Coca Cola making something for Pepsi? Yeah, they're like, <laughs> no thanks. No, I think that's <laughs> yeah. They had more fuel. Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I, I, one more, one more kind of like shop talk, right before we wrap up. So I, uh, you know, you and Denny uh, Potter work pretty close hand in hand. I guess uh, like what is what is your all's repertoire between um, going back and forth on, you know, whether you need a hand over here or you need to go over there and help him, or is it just kind of like we'll just spitball ideas on a on a on a weekday or something? Well, you know, Denny has his operation over there, and uh, I have mine here, and and you know we're we're same company, but we're kind of two different operations. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, we 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 do exchange ideas sometimes, you know, on things. But during uh, but as long as operating, you know, operation side, he does his, and I do mine. Uh, grains and stuff, you know, we talk about different grains and stuff, uh, suppliers and whatever. Uh, if we're out together, you know, we we do, you know, we've done uh, tastings at uh, different liquor stores. You know, we get together and and. and we can cl collaborate on and what we're going to talk about, who we're going to talk about, you know. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't ask them beforehand we can talk about that, but we do anyway. Back. We're talk about yeah, here we go. But, you know, different things like that. But, you know, it, like I said, it's two, it's two different operations. Uh, it's like your mother and father, you know, coming in, you know, the same family. She mm -hmm. has her job. He has his job. Sometimes mm -hmm. you talk about him. Sometimes you don't at the dinner table. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah, but like, 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 who's who's bringing the bigger picture? <laughs> <That's your right. laughs> oh well, you want to talk about that now? <laughs> we can have we can ask Lauren or somebody like that. You know about the bigger picture. Yeah. But no, you know. But you know, we work together as much as we can on things, and uh, and talk. And but like I said, it's two different operations. Uh, as uh, interchanging. Uh, employees we don't do that mm -hmm. over there you know the yeah the you're, over not trying, there, you're not trying to poach between them right yeah, yeah you know you know uh you know denny's a great guy uh and you know i've i, I since denny you know came on board uh i've helped him you know in a lot of ways you know to be uh, custom get accustomed to how we do things at the burnheim plant because i had worked there you know when we bought the plant in april 1999 myself and craig beam had worked started working there you know been there ever since so you know the ins and outs of of, of the Bernheim plant, I, I'm pretty familiar with. Mm -hmm. So Denny, you know, Denny has called and you know asked certain things, whatever about this and that. So you know, it, it it's a good working relationship between us. But like I said, we don't intermingle employees. Uh, all their employees over there, you know, it's the Bernheim plant is most one technology advanced series in the world. So everything's over, you know, run by computer So mm -hmm. here, over here, we do everything by hand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, somebody over there don't want to go over and work by hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, yeah, yeah. So what do you, what's this for? What's this, what's this for? So can't keep pushing, but, but not really, it's, it's a great plan over there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do converse about things, but 
uh, we don't interchange employees. So what do you think is, is going to be next for Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, right? It's, uh, I mean, at this point, you've said there's, there's no expansion. It's not going to be possible just because of the footprint. But I mean, uh, you know, I think maybe the, the obvious one is uh, a bottle of something will hit the shelves at some point. But like, what, what, what do you think is going to be the next, next roadmap mile for you? Well, let's see. Retirement. <laughs> no, 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 you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll be, I'll be. Actually, I got a birthday coming up next Saturday. Hey, I'll be 62. Happy early. Thank you. Yeah, and, and you know, and I've enjoyed every every minute being here at Heaven Hill. Mm-hmm. You know, what we're looking going down the road, what we're going to do. Wait and see. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I, yeah, we, I guess we, that's a good question to ask you about retirement because I mean, we've we've interviewed plenty of master distillers. Uh, you know, Jimmy Russell being one of the big ones that we can talk about, and he's. Uh, you know, well into his 80s, and he's at the distillery every single day. You, you think you're going to be that kind of way? You think you're just going to say, I've had a good time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand the reins over and let somebody else take over from here. If we could all tell the future. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you don't know if you can we, you know, up. <laughs> But, you know, I enjoy what I do. I love what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only, you know, with, with, with the great family here that we work with, employees and owners also. And producing a great product. I mean, how, you know, well, how can we go wrong? How can I go wrong? Mm-hmm. You know, as long as I'm healthy, uh, be able to kind of work every day, enjoy what I do, and produce a great product for that that I know that I am producing a great product for the family, for the company, and for the consumer. It's all who know, sure who well. knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know. Maybe you'll we'll, maybe we'll get a 50th you know, anniversary. Of I, for I, you can't ever tell. I might. <laughs> but you know, I say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. You know, yeah. it's, it's, you always think, you know, people ask, you know, well, you're 62, you're going to retire. Why? Well, I enjoy what I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love what I do. Yeah. Because you're just here in the Louisville area, too, right? So it makes it a little bit easier. No, no, no. I drive, I drive here every day. From Barstown. Oh, from Barstown, oh, yes. Wow. Always have. You know, it, it, it takes, you know, as long as hit the right summer, the right time of day, about 45 minutes. Yeah. It's, not, right. it's not bad, Mm-mm. you know. It's just, you know, this, the, the traffic sometimes is horrendous coming in, you know, especially yeah. if it's a wreck or whatever, you know, and I'm impatient. <laughs> I can I sit in traffic, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already got my hands gripped on, well, let's go, let's go, you know. Well, it's, it's, it sounds like the perfect time to be able to kill it with a, you know, listening to a podcast on the way. So, <laughs> right, right, there we go, there we go, there we go, yeah. So, but, Charlie, no, but, yeah. but I'm here, you know, uh, yeah. uh, same way, you know, with the, the, uh, Jody, my assistant, you know, Jody's been here for 35 years, and, you know, he's 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 not a spring chicken like us either, like me either. <laughs> I, was so, you know, say, I was going to say, so, is he itching for you to no. leave so he can take your position? <laughs> hey, isn't everybody? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, then also, you know, James, James is 31, mm-hmm. uh, and Will is probably 29, so these guys said, yeah. Kick the old man out the door. Let's go. <laughs> Kick him out. Let's go. Well, I want a job. Bourbon's like a preservative. I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's what the guys, you know, the guys who have my white hair at time, you know, said, "Yep, it makes you turn ball sometimes, but it, <laughs> it keeps you preserved, keeps you young, hmm. keeps your mind alert, and others." <laughs> there you go. That's, what's, yeah, it's a, that's a good line right there. Bourbon's a preservative. It really is. You know, I mean, for for. All kinds of different things, especially for the, the mm-hmm. human factor. For sure. <laughs> Good for you, so, Charlie, I want to say thank you again for coming on the show today. Yeah. Uh, it was a Appreciate pleasure to finally get some more Heaven Hill love on here. Uh, you know, we've been we've been uh, looking forward to be able to get you on here and uh, actually, you know, feature the the UB, the Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, yeah. on here as well. So, uh, definitely a pleasure. So, yeah. again, Th- thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much. Awesome. So, if you like what you hear, make sure you tell a friend. Uh, you know, support the podcast uh, by telling a friend. Write us reviews on iTunes, and of course. We're always open to advertisers and sponsors that want to partner with us for um, helping support the show and, and keep it going. If you have any more show suggestions, uh, make sure you send us an email at theduo at bourbonpursuit.com. And Shannon, I want to say thank you yeah, again for uh, helping co host today and step in when, when Ryan can't be here. Sorry, I hope you Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? He, he, he might be out of a job soon. We'll oh. see. <laughs> Not quite yet. <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, but again, thank you so much, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you.